8% comes from the fact that 92% of insurance agents fail in their first three years. Wow. What, what does nine, what, what, what does 8% mean to you knowing that statistic? Well, it's, it's sort of like any kind of a skill. Uh, the skill of selling is like the skill of typing. It's like the, the skill of riding a bicycle. It's a, it's a learnable skill. And it's something that you can learn through continuous practice. And a lot of people don't understand that. And when uh, I started off in selling and knocking on doors and knocking on doors, and uh, after six months, I was just still struggling. And there was one guy at our office, and I tell this story. His name was Pete, and I still see his face after all these years. And um, Pete was selling 10 times as much as anybody else uh, in, in, in the company. We had about 15 people. And uh, I would start working at 7 or 8 in the morning, knocking on doors. And Pete would start at 9 or 10 o'clock, and he would take time off for lunch, and he would quit at uh, 4.30 or 5. And um, he just had a great life, and he earned more money than anybody else. And one day I asked him, I said, Pete, why, why is it that you earn so much more uh, than I do? And he said, well, show me your sales presentation, and I'll critique it for you. And I said, Geez, I don't have a sales presentation. I had heard about a sales presentation. I sometimes joke and I say it was like something on the other side of the room, of the moon. Is I knew there was there was a, a sales presentation out there, but I'd never seen one. And I said, "Well, I don't have a presentation." He said, "Well, what do you do when you get face to face with a prospective customer?" And I said, "Oh, I just I tell them how good a." our product is and, and, and how helpful it is and how much it's better than anybody else and everything. And he said, no, no, I remember, I remember this. We, we, we had an office in this office building, third floor, and we went downstairs and across the street and we're sitting on a park bench, uh, this big city park, a city park bench. And he said, he said, that's not how you, you sell. What you do is you don't talk, you ask questions. And I said, ask questions, because I was told, you have the gift of the gap. You know, you, you, you can talk really well. And he said, no, 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 no. Ask questions and listen closely to the answers. And over the years, I found is that, that your ability to ask questions and listen to the answers in a positive way is really the key to successful selling. And a good friend of mine, uh, one of my best friends now, top sales guy, uh, he said, uh, remember, listening builds trust. Listening builds trust. Well, how do you get a chance to listen? Well, you ask questions. You ask good questions and you lean forward, you lean into the question. And, uh, and when you listen closely, people warm up to you and listening builds trust. And the more you listen, the more they trust you and the more they like you and the more they're open to being influenced by you. And I still remember those were some of the most important things is that, wow, Listening builds trust. So I asked questions. I just kept asking more questions. And what about this? And what about that? And what are you doing now? And how is that working for you? And uh, what are your goals? What are your plans for the future? And it was constantly asking questions. Changed my whole life. Instead of trying to persuade or influence people, instead, listen to them and try to help them. Uh, when I do seminars, when I hit the peak. I was doing seminars. My average seminar was 1,600 people for more than 20 years. Um, and sometimes it was 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, with gusts up to um, uh, 5,000. My biggest seminars were uh, 20,000, uh, 25,000. And um, it was wonderful. And it was so helpful to people. They leaned forward. And in my seminars, one of the things I learned is to ask Questions rather than talking and trying to impress people, ask them questions about themselves and what they're doing, what their goals are, and, and, and so on. And it was just so wonderful. And it's the same thing with you. You you are going to be uh, a great speaker um, in the years ahead. Uh, and you'll find that when when I start off with the audience, I start off by asking them questions and asking them and follow up questions and more follow-up questions. And people love it when you ask them questions and listen, because, because questions um, encourage them to really think deeply about what it is they're doing. 
and uh, and so uh, I would ask I would ask people uh, questions, and then I would give them answers, and ask more questions, and give them more answers, and so on. And that's how I got to where I am today. I would uh, ask questions and give answers, and tell them how how to use the information. So many people, I'm happy, have become millionaires. Uh, uh, my friends at Nightingale Conant uh, did a research uh, study uh, on people who used my materials. They found that more, that more people, more salespeople became millionaires as a result of using my materials than any other single influence. And of course, everybody wants to be a millionaire. And yes, you can become a millionaire. And what you do is you do what millionaires do. And good millionaires. It's interesting. One of the richest people in the world is Mark, is, is, uh, Mark Zuckerberg and um, president of um, uh, Facebook. And they say he's got a five to one ratio in terms of uh, listening um, and speaking is that uh, he uh, asks questions five times for every one time that he uh, talks or comments or gives guidance. And it's just an interesting thing. It's just he just continually asks more questions and takes notes and and so on. And so that's a very good thing to remember. And and I see you taking notes. That's a very smart thing. The, the, the most success the most successful people take notes all the time. And um, it's just a, it, it, what it does is it helps you to think uh, at a at a deeper level and also to review the material. I'm always astonished. I, I'm, I I would say, say, okay, please write this down. And people in my audiences, you got, a, you got an extra pencil or you got an extra pen. Is they, they come to a, a full day seminar and they don't have a pencil. They don't have a pen. They don't have anything to write with. I just shake my head. SMH, SMH, shaking my head, shaking my head. Yes, I can't believe that. I can't believe that people would go to a seminar without preparation to write things down. And so that's another thing is um, make sure that when, people come to your uh, seminars is that they uh, are supplied with um, writing materials and, and so on. And so I always uh, carry a, a red pen and a blue pen. And my, my kids would ask me, dad, do you have a pen? I say, what do you want? Red or blue? Red or blue. <laughs> you know, I've always got two and one is to underline uh, in red and, and, and blue is to, is to make a note. And, um, and so my kids now, carry pens around and they hear something good they immediately write it down uh, napoleon hill had this wonderful one-liner he said um and when you think it ink it mm. i thought that was really cute when you think it ink it if you have an idea uh when an idea goes through your mind like a comet immediately write it down because if you don't you will forget it you'll lose it and sometimes you'll have one good idea that can change your life and if you don't write it down, you'll think, geez, what was that idea? And uh, then you find, meet somebody else who had that same idea as well. And uh, sometimes it's just one simple idea that changes your life. One of the things for our friends who are watching is uh, how important it is uh, to take notes and to read, is to just dedicate yourself to continuous learning. This is, I say that there's three things in, in, in my life and uh, I talk about these three. I call them the golden triangle of success, like a triangle. And when I look back over my life, I realize that there are three great things. Number one is to accept responsibility for your life. Don't complain. Uh, don't make excuses. Don't blame other people for your problems. Always accept responsibility. Uh, number two is to have goals, clear written goals and plans. And number three is dedicate yourself to continuous learning is always be learning you look behind me i was just reading a, an article uh, on me that was in uh, on uh, yeah in, in in youtube it wasn't in youtube it was on uh, it was on google and somebody had done a complete research it was called it was called 20 things that you don't know about brian tracy well i'd never seen this before so i read it and one of them is that it said Brian Tracy has read more than 7,000 books. And I thought, oh. and yes, that's true. I must have said it somewhere. You see these books, these are all double stacked. So there's, there's two books in every shelf from the top to the bottom. All you can see is the middle, but the bottom, the top. And uh, this is just in my office. 
and it goes all the way around, but it's also outside. It's uh, uh, in other rooms. It's up downstairs. It's, you know, my whole house is just full of books. And I may not have read them all, but I continue to buy and read books. And then sometimes you just come across one idea and you say, geez, that's a good idea. Geez, that's a good idea. And then, and then, and then you have uh, an opportunity. Here's something really interesting. I found it, and I, I studied metaphysics in my 20s. I came across this, a Russian school of metaphysics. And, and what they taught was that you never learn a subject without having very soon an opportunity to learn or to use that new material. Yes. As you, you learn the material and very soon you get a chance to use it. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And for the rest of my life, I realized you, you read an article on something, you find it in a book or a magazine, and uh, very soon afterwards, you have an opportunity to use that material to improve your life or the life of someone else. And, um, and so therefore, you, you must dedicate yourself to lifelong learning. For the rest, you're just always learning. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. Thank you so much. I wanna thank Cody and Lauren for putting this on. Give those guys a big hand for doing this. Amazing, amazing event, okay? Amazing, really, you guys are awesome. Like, when he called and said, hey, would you do this deal? The fact that they're willing to...